I'd like to show you how to play Heart Times by the Human League using my Insonic EPS 16 Plus sampler workstation. All the sounds and sequencing is done in this EPS with no external computer sequencer. I first found Heart Times on this album of remixes many years ago called Love and Dancing. It sounds fantastic, really tight, and I soon became intoxicated by it. Later, I found the 7-inch version. As you'd expect, I had to figure out all the various synth bars, of which I'd like to show you now. Firstly, I had to go through my sample library to find sounds that were similar to the ones on the track. So most of these sounds are from the standard Sonic library. For the Lindrum, I found some samples on the internet and fed them into the EPS, and this is what this white strip across the keyboard is for. It's the mapping. So here is a snare. Here is a cowbell. Well, and here is the same snare, right over here, uh, with reverb already added to it using resampling. This is the standard one, and with resampling. The EPS allows you to feed a sample through its internal effects unit and resample it with the effects added. It's actually quite a nice trick. What I've done, I've created a new empty sequence in the EPS and I've called it Basic HT01. And on there now I'm going to put the basic standard drum beat, which is going to be nothing more than... So, I'll do that right now. Quite easily done. Here we go. Keep new. Uh, I'm in that. I'm going to quantize it because it's supposed to be a drum machine after all. Quantize it to sixteenths. Yep. Entire track. Keep new because it'll be about right. That. <laughs> Quick test on that. Next thing to do is to add the bass line. Now I think it's got this quick octave note on the G, like that. Okay. And I'm going to add that next. Here we go. Being recorded, I'm going to keep the new one because it'll be about right. I'm going to quantize it because it's supposed to be a machine again to 16th entire track. Keep new, let's have a listen. Right, and that's your basic track. Right, so what I've done, I've taken that basic track, which was basic HT01, made a copy of it, and I've called it basic HT02, and that track simply has. The, the drum kit and the bass synth on. Right, so over that now I'm going to put one of the synth parts. Going to put that, here we go. Right, the sequence has given me this option of keeping the old or keep the new. I'm going to keep the new. Let's have a quick listen to it. Right, I've tried quantizing this in the part. The sound's never quite right, so I'm going to quite try and quantize it to, to 16th. Entire track. Let's see how it sounds. I think it will do. Now, that particular riff... That is my, what I call, riff number one. I've listed all the riffs out so I can keep track of all the different parts. And it's good to do that because when you come to it later you get awfully confused. Anyway, so that's... What I'd like to show you now is what I call riff number two. And it goes like this, starting on the G. Plays that a couple of times, and then the second part to that is... And that's all there is to that. So, if I now play riff number two over the track, here we go.
Have a go. What I'll do now is I'll make a copy of that sequence, sequence number two. So I'm now going to add the stab part, which I've had echo. This is going to be this part. And you can hear it. You can hear I've added lots of uh, echo over this part. I'm going to add the two together. It's going to be simpler. Right, I don't think I played it particularly on time, so I'll quantize that. Sixteenths, see how it's... And now what I'd like to show you is riff number four, and it goes like this. as simple as that just to show you how it sounds like over the track so that I've got the um, basic track that's all there is to that Right, there's another riff I need to show you. Goes. There we go. I need to show you that. Keep new, let's see how it sounds. Right, I think we've got most of the patterns there, haven't we? Looking at my notes. Yeah, right, the fun begins, I think. What I've done now is I've taken those sequences we've made just earlier on and I've combined them sequentially to make a song. So when I press the play now it'll play sequence pattern number one, then maybe sequence pattern number two, then sequence pattern number three, and then sequence pattern number one, that type of thing, just like any other sequencer. But it's all done within here. It's quite easy to do. On this second track I've used I've set that up to, to drive an external sampler and it's driving my uh, ESI32. And in there I've taken samples directly off the record, uh, which sound, I've got three here that I use. That's the girls. And Phil. And you can guess what I'm going to do, and this is why it's taken me so long to do this video for you. Because once I've started adding it all together, then I add the supernova to some of the other parts. You can just spend your life playing with this single track, it's fantastic. And you can guess what I'm going to do now, so if I just press play... And it just goes on like that until you're dead. 